Not one single day has gone by that we haven't seen or heard something or received something. Every single day. Sounds, mm -hmm. noises, gifts. The, um, every night that I record, now I just bypass the knocks, the tree knocks, the pops, the lift pops, <laughs> all that. I'm just looking for the Holy Grail. I mean, if I want to sit in there for eight hours, I could record what, 25 tree knocks a night at least. Mm -hmm. Maybe more, maybe if I want to listen to every little second of What's the every Holy Grail? Hour, like a total scream and... I think I'm the most skeptical of the three of us. <laughs> you weren't last night at 2 a.m. <laughs> What I happened? have been the most skeptical of. I know. What happened last night? I woke him up. I go, was that you knocking on the side of the house? He goes, no. <laughs> Bad. Or like, it sounded like his hand, you know, five times real quick. And it was the middle of the night. It was not a woodpecker. Just five times. It was louder than that. Enough to wake me up. Where could you say where it was? I thought it was him tapping the headboard. It was that mm. close. So oh, maybe out here? Mm -hmm. Yep. Hmm. Did you get a chance to look? He didn't go. I looked a little bit. Did you? How much would that sleep? No, not last night. Today. Today? Oh. You got to go in the moment, Daryl. I can understand why people are skeptical over our story. Mm -hmm. Because of the fact of what I'm doing at Axe and Fiddle, what, what you're building in your garage, mm -hmm. what Daryl's interests were beforehand. I was see why people and fishing. <laughs> right. But you guys will continue. All they have to do is spend one night here. We don't care. You'll continue to have activities up to you how you move forward with it because it seems like they're getting more brazen. What were they doing a couple nights ago when you came downstairs? And it's really weird. It's like, you know, when there's big percussion, the house will either shake yeah. or yeah, yeah, yeah. The ha I kind of say it as um, the house actually felt it that I could, you know, the windows vibrated a little, or, and it wasn't like a creaking noise, but it was just like there was some loud or some kind of percussion somewhere that was making vibrations happen. What do you think is going on? Since we haven't seen anything, Daryl, mm. what? Do you have mixed feelings about what's going on at all? As far as, I mean, we both, we all agree something is. Mm -hmm. But what? Well, at first I thought, you know, Bigfoot's just a monkey out in the woods. 1,800, 1,200 pounds, different sizes. But after all this, for the last 90 days, it's just some really weird stuff has happened. Really weird sounds. Sometimes it's like something opens up and things come out at night in the back up on the mountainside. <laughs> you can't explain it. You can hear a sound like a big door creaking opening and old radios playing and mm -hmm. just weird stuff. And your mind just can't contend with it because it's just too weird. Things showing up like maybe a rock after you've looked and you know it wasn't there before and mm -hmm. an hour later you go back and there here's this rock and nobody's around nowhere or an antique Christmas ornament being left or <laughs> anything like and the weirdest stuff I mean where do you I don't know you'd have to go to St. Vinny's to get this crap I think I don't know where you'd get this just different array of things what is the weirdest thing that you think they've given us that dead rabbit <laughs> Maybe a, or a snake. Dr. Toby said, "Don't send snakes." <laughs> All of a sudden, well, you know, we were in the Pentecostal. And threw a snake we, were, on us. we were in the front yard one day, and I said, "Just bring me a satchel full of money." And they brought a bag, a satchel. It had some blackberries in it, and it was left for us. Yeah. So. And we said gold, and then they bring them <laughs> golden thing. Right. And it's just you think, what do they got like? A bag of junk up in the woods that they can just pull out of? I mean, where do they get this stuff? Well, it's just, how do you think they hear us? How do you think they know what we're saying? I don't know. I have no idea. I mean, what's your opinion, Cindy? Do you think that they there's some other answer here, maybe more uncomfortable? Do you think they understand English? Is it that basic? 
Well, we've heard voices of more than one communicating. We just couldn't understand the language. So there's, I think it's, one way I kind of look at it is, is it's an entire community, like Cottage Grove is a community, and all the little towns are communities. Mm -hmm. I think there's a community, millions of communities of these, whatever they are, all over the world. And kind of like the witching hour is, you know, three in the morning, that's when they become active. Maybe they're nocturnal, and they don't want us to see them. Right. So I don't know. What I don't like is when... Uh, they're elevated to like a godlike status, and they right. can uh, read minds. They can walk through walls and leave gifts, and they people just get so overboard with it sometimes. But again, I'm skeptical, right? And I'm kind of a scientific thinker, so I'm just I want to I have to kind of see something to believe it, right? And I see evidence of things happening, so something is going on. At any time, did you think it was me? I didn't think it was you or you because I don't. Th I really? think you guys respect Daryl. Did you ever think it was me? Because I no, never, th I never thought it was we're you. We're gone all the time when it happens. Right. Mm -hmm. Gone fishing. I'm gone to town. We're, you know, I'm in here. Or no. It's just so random. We've been in the shop. Did you ever set up happens. anything to try to catch me, like on camera? Because mm -hmm. I thought about it. With, <laughs> I thought about it once or twice with everybody here. Mm -hmm. I was like, I'm gonna catch Somebody. Wormy or Chris or Cindy. Mm -hmm. Well, we've had the cameras out now, and no one... I can show you the pair from last night. You're going to go, what? I think you two... And then Cindy's going to go, what did that? Let's hope. But I, you know, An invisible person. Oh, the pair gets knocked off? Looks like it gets set down. It lowers itself? It goes down slowly? I'll have to show you. It's just weird. And then there's three oh, shots. Oh, because it's not there. a video. It's just shots. Yeah. From the game cam, right? But yeah. then, but then there's three shots on there where there is nothing, and you kind of want to look, and it mm -hmm. almost looks like you got some kind of, I don't want to say cloaking stuff, but there's some weird. What's it like for you things. to say that word cloaking? Because you know you came you into know, this as someone who totally just thought it was a monkey hiding out in the woods, right. or whatever. I don't know. There's stuff that's happened here that it's unexplainable. And I know, you know, I think if we, if there was a 10 foot monkey man running around, we'd have saw a flash of him. So. Well, you kind of did see a flash with Jude. Do you feel that way? Yeah. Still? I, that was a, like a mirage in the road, like you're in the desert and you see the mirage going across there. It wasn't up and down. It was more of a sideways. Right. I mean, it wasn't super wide, but I don't know what it was. Me and Jude both saw it, and it was just like these heat wave things, and then... What temperature was it that I day? don't know. What do you think about all the weirdness around here that <sighs> stuff can just show up and out of the blue? So here's my stake in it, is that I think it is super paranormal. I believe that all these things are happening that are highly paranormal. I think they're responsible for it. I think we've encouraged it with Strange Brown. Mm -hmm. I think they like the fact that we believe it. I think they like the fact that I talk about it. Because they do it more often after Axe and Fiddle. Mm -hmm. There's some kind of something. The snake was left. Mm -hmm. Was it the snake? The snake was left after Axe and Fiddle. The agate was left after the Axe and Fiddle last time. The big one. Um, and maybe the other stuff I didn't quite link together. So why would that be? And how should you take it? And should you be careful? Yeah, you should probably be careful because you don't exactly know the nature of what they're trying to do. And of course, I always go back to C.S. Lewis's The Screw Tape Letters, which I don't know if you guys have seen. Have you ever seen No, have you but ever I like C.S. Lewis. Okay, so C.S. Lewis wrote this book about how the... Um, mid-world or demonic world likes to lure man's ego and they do it in a very interesting, he writes about it from a demon's point of view and it's a young demon and an older demon and the older demon's name screw tape so he's tutoring the mid-world younger demon on how to do this properly and how to lure someone away from their faith, how to lure them away from everything, their family so I always think about this and the one time I feel like I really got screw taped is with that rabbit. Mm. Because it was, it seemed like a true test 
to, I took it this way, you know, be, it was a really bizarre experience because it was like, it reminded me, A, of either, let's go clinical. Let's say I just encountered an indigenous tribe and I didn't know their way of life and I totally screwed it up because I didn't accept their gift. No matter how crazy and uncomfortable it was, I screwed up because I responded improperly and therefore we got punished for three or four days and then we got the snake and it's like the ultimate insult. But what if it was to stroke my ego to say, oh, I can ask for whatever I want. This is kind of like a hairy genie. Mm -hmm. Like I can, I can have this mm -hmm. spirit animal. Mm -hmm. So I see that going on in this community where people start to elevate these things to a deity status, like mm -hmm. they're healers. The amount of stuff that has happened here in the last 90 days, it's almost like they want you to tell the story. It's just like, oh, and Toby's going to tell the story, so let's just, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. he's a blabbermouth. He's going to tell everybody. <laughs> and your story has facts and items to, to back it. It's no. like they've mm -hmm. given us it's time. Like, to, right yeah. in 75, I saw a big foot when right. I was out camping. No. Why do they keep putting all the crazy stuff near me? I, I think it's because they want me to talk about it. It's for validation. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah. It's the proof most the people way don't it, have. But why don't they go to the skeptic? You know what I mean? Like... I'm not Why open to it. You're not open the to way, it. Uh, the way it is, you oh, know, I, in Oregon right now, That's a good point. you go out, you throw a piece of pepperoni on the ground, those meat bees are on it in a minute, and it's like, that that rabbit had nothing on it. When you no, it. neither did the snake. Mm -hmm. So those things couldn't have been there more than a minute. I mean, around here, even in the backyard, you sat down for a minute to try to get you. I mean, the bees are That's so That's why we had year. the camera on those immediately the knees the bees <laughs> the rabbit yeah, everything had a camera on it immediately because it almost is i mean it's like you have to see it through a camera lens and then play back on a monitor and say holy crap yeah i mean there's a moment you guys haven't seen yet with me down at the creek mm -hmm. with that rabbit right and going i don't know what i'm going to do here i have what do i want like why am i doing this what do i want out of this mm -hmm. and i hear i am talking to myself and, and then I break the rabbit leg and like, well, I'll just take a memento and I'll throw the rabbit away. So I, here I am with this lucky rabbit's foot. Lucky rabbit's foot. And I'm like, that seems even more warped. You know? I mean, that's, like, no, that, that's no lucky rabbit. I know, right? <laughs> I think maybe right. they target individuals who are fully open emotionally Mentally. and welcoming to it. But what about now? Let's, let's speak openly. Do you think that they target individuals that might be naive? Their brains are falling out. <laughs> no, I think they. I think they're smart. I think. I think they're very smart, <laughs> and they target people that uh -huh. they can use or manipulate. Could be. Yeah. Could be. I mean, because I think about that too. I mean, I'm not so naive that I don't think about my own naivete. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of people based on their life experiences, they're very vulnerable to suggestive thinking right. or a lot of people who use substances, marijuana included, they are very um, easy to manipulate because right. their mind is not in the right place. It's been altered. My scariest thing was when I was standing in your trailer door and the thing ran up behind me and it's just like Right. And I turn around and then it just it's gone. I mean, you can hear it. You know there's something there, like a big animal or something. Did you see it? But I didn't see it. We both heard it. But it was loud. Well, then I was looking out the upstairs that night, and something took off running, and I heard it. It didn't make any noise with its mouth or anything, but the body, I mean, it was just ripped. You can just hear, hear it hitting the ground, and whew, like it was over the fence like nothing. But you know in your mind that, man, that was something there, a big animal. You know, when I'm hunting out in the woods and I'm all in this thick bush and, you know, a deer takes off or a bear or an elk or something takes off, you can hear it. I mean, it's not quiet. It's like... What about your overall and it's gone. feeling here, Daryl? Do you feel like... I kind of had this feeling for a long time about Sasquatch, Bigfoot, whatever, that they go underground. And I hear a lot of underground stuff here because, right. you know, I worked in underground for 37 years. 
So I've heard all kinds of noises <laughs> underground. <laughs> right, you're like I've Dick. been underground. You're like Dick Dud. I'm like a dental rat. <laughs> but, there could be something to that because you know with all of the technology, and he's not been found, that he's not been seen with helicopters, planes, search parties. He's got to be somewhere, and, and underground would be a really good explanation. I don't know if he goes there all the time, but I think they have a ways to go under there. What about the news? What do you think the link is between us bringing back the Al Moon Prince um, and the stuff happening? Anything? I think they're really intelligent. They might, they may have followed us. I'm only, it's only 10 miles that way to mm -hmm. where we got them. And we went back and forth there three or four times, so. If they could communicate with other ones, you know, hey, you know. Mm -hmm. Like everybody says, you're out in the woods, everybody's beating on a tree and banging. The Bigfoot, they already know you're there. If you're standing out in the woods hunting like I've been. Right. And these gravelly, you know, logging roads. Sometimes I can hear a car coming for like three or four miles, you know, and I'm just a can't even hear anymore from all the heavy equipment. But right, a Bigfoot or an animal, they know the minute you enter their zone, which is a few miles away. I think, you know, how hard would it be? I mean, there's so much forest here that you can't even get through. Right. There's probably underground caves here everywhere. There's probably, who knows, underneath the whole state. But I, you know, I've heard sounds up here on the mountainside that sounds like it's coming from underground, like the ground shaking, and me and you heard it, like 500 pounders going off. You know, it's a boom. Cindy, how much is too much as far as like activity? Like how much? I know you're reserved from the point you're skeptic. Too much for um, her would be when I start really breaking stuff. It, but yeah, how much is too much for you? Like the if house felt, banging. If, you know, that what doesn't bother me, but if I feel threatened, there's potential harm or risk mm -hmm. in engaging in any of this. I would then it would be too much. I, it's their home. We live in it. I just don't. Um, I don't want to be too skeptical that I think it couldn't be possible. I think it's possible, highly likely, as right. a matter of fact. But only if I feel threatened or my family and. Um, you know, also in relationships, people can take it so far that nothing matters but that, and they sacrifice it. Well, they don't sacrifice, but they walk away from very important life obligations to pursue that. Right. That needs, I think those individuals really need counseling. Yeah. Weigh their priorities. You know, there's time for play, and there's time for research, but you know, if we make those decisions, those grown up decisions to be married and have kids, be married and have kids, and yeah. then have your hobby, but not make it take over your life. Some people are just obsessed. They can't even hold a job. Well, oh, yeah, they could tail their job to mm -hmm. be around us even more. Almost like a drug. Yeah. When I yeah. first started recording out here, I hadn't heard a lot of tree knocks. I heard a few, you know, here and there when I was out down in Douglas County, out by the coast and stuff, and up, up by Twin Lakes at night. But I had hardly heard any, you know. And now here, I mean... Right. Every night, it's just, and it gets so um, repetitive that you don't even care when you should really care. It becomes the norm. Mm -hmm. It just, it's kind of like, you know, it's, you're just waiting for the aha moment. Abnormal becomes normal. Every night, it's lip pops, right. tree knocks, screams way out in the woods somewhere that you can't make out. Whispers. Whispers weird things opening up in the woods. It sounded like a rock being opened on the tomb where well, we did do you guys have, get that on Good Friday. Do you Friday. have any um, interest in interacting with this? With a creature? Something Whatever's like? going on. Like, if it wants to interact with you guys, especially after I leave, how um, will you respond and do you want any interest in interacting back? Sure. Yeah, I'm not, I'm it doesn't scare it. me. I'd like to actually have an encounter, seeing one, you know, face to face. I don't know how close, but I just mm -hmm. don't want to feel threatened. If my if I perceive a threat, that's mm -hmm. when it becomes an issue. Right, which is kind of how I took the rabbit, and that's mm -hmm. why I had such a mm -hmm. difficult time because it seemed yeah. like I don't know. 
But you know, with two snake, dead animals, especially. yeah, that you had two dead animals and you made it very clear, don't be doing this. This is not nice. And they can take me home. Again. I like monkeys. It must be so confusing, though, if that was taken, let's say, from a misunderstanding to see me come home with Carl's Jr. Or, <laughs> you know what I mean? Me with, like, dead animals and my, you know, leather shoes. It might mm -hmm. be confusing to them. Like, well, wait right? a second. Right. You're into dead animals, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. But it's a culture. Is that a leap too far? Is it more like. No. We're just going to play a trick on him. I mean, we don't. We're not. We're not thinking about it deeply. This guy is just obviously a sucker for our tricks. It's a meeting of two different cultures. You know, you have a culture who, uh, two cultures. You know, we're meat eaters and we do that stuff. But you know, the hurt animals or the dead animals crosses mm -hmm. a line for us. Where for them, they eat animals, so hurt animals or dead animals is really nothing to them. So they're coming at it from their perspective of. This is an okay thing. I don't mean anything bad by it. Right. I don't think they intended anything negative by that. But our culture sees it as harm, threat, or whatever Well, you is. know what it was, Cindy? It was the fact that they really are listening. Mm -hmm. Because there was no way that was a coincidence. Mm -hmm. And then the snake came and it was like, not only is it not a coincidence, now it's getting, you know, really mm -hmm. intimate. Getting like, real. they know my deep fear. Mm -hmm. You know... What got me the first time was when we were walking back up that road and we heard that big yell up the hill on the other side of yeah, London. Right. Like the and then stuff. I mean we're walking, 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 yeah. and I get we get right here to the edge and I go, Hey, can you guys do that again? And we didn't hear it for a long time and no sooner I said that. No, you said hear. if we walk on that spot, I bet yeah. they're gonna do that again. Yeah. And as soon as we put our foot down it went off into like ambulance mode screen. Yeah, and yeah. It, like how could that have happened? I mean, that's, we walked, you know, a mile up the road and it didn't happen. So how could that moment, could that have, I, I don't know, it just messes with your head. I mean, the amount of things they're giving us is a lot. And I don't think they're just giving it to us. I think it's like a, a gift exchange for miles and miles. Mm -hmm. So are these either fresh inventory you know drop-offs or do they have a backlog do they you know what I mean mm -hmm. like to do this on a full scale like as often as it's happened mm -hmm. I mean we must have over 30 items over 90 okay. days you know, so it's 1970s thermos what do you guys think do they keep these hidden somewhere no I think that my thoughts are that I don't think they hoard them or pack wrap them to have a supply on hand um, I our culture is so trashy. There's trash everywhere, stuff we consider trash, like the stuff they've been leaving, rocks, sticks, uh, trash, that, or we would consider trash because we're a materialistic culture. They are not. Right. So to them, that's a beautiful thing they're giving up for you. So they could just walk up down this road and find something, or, or they probably have a great memory of where they've seen stuff, and remember, they're going to go back to it. What about the idea that one of the people said that the two of the items are from Colorado? <clears throat> the little goldfish and the dinosaur, right? Mm -hmm. Some a witness got a hold of me and said those items belong to her daughter, who's also a witness, and they're in Colorado. I mean, that implies a pretty great distance. <laughs> like, how would that happen? I haven't seen a little... Dinosaur toys and that kind of stuff. I haven't seen the dinosaur, but the, remember the little yellow metal car out back? That's the only one I saw. Only yeah. two, I think. But we find balloons and we find little metal pieces of trash that they just threw in the flower bed. So the people that were here before us left a lot of that kind of stuff around. Do you think that they left for the same reason? They the people were before us? Yeah. Do you think that had anything to do with it? I, I, they never said, so I couldn't assume. Mm -hmm. Um you know, because when you sell a house, you're supposed to disclose that stuff. But and what if you don't know what it is? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, like if someone dies in your home, you have to disclose right. that. If you feel you're haunted, that kind of stuff, you have to disclose that when you sell a home. But as far as what they may have experienced, I'm sure they experienced some stuff. Because they lived here for well, how long? Since 90. Yeah, so <clears throat> we've been here since years. December in this house. December 14th, we got the keys. And we've had non-stop activity, so I'm sure they had 20 years of that. Oh, you've had non-stop? Since we got here. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. What was the first thing that you noticed then, Cindy? Because I haven't heard that. 
sounds out there the sounds. when we're out there with yeah. the dogs. Right. And you wonder, well. but then as things have pro progressed, in hindsight's twenty twenty, you can look back and go, oh, I was hearing knocks then, mm -hmm. but I, I did, wasn't aware. But now with all this research that you guys have done, mm -hmm. thorough research, yeah. You know, it gives some answers now to questions like we had then or I had then. Plus, uh, at first, we probably wouldn't have noticed any gifts or anything. We were so busy you know, doing it for got, a while. Well, th yeah, busy I mean, doing stuff. And had they amped it up and maybe started leaving them, mm -hmm. you know, on your front door. Yeah, something like that. But, right. you know, if say there's a rock in the yard that's weird or something here or something there, we'd have probably just passed right by and not even thinking. It really escalated once you two got together. Once and I the think it's knees because, got in there. <clears throat> I think it was because of a couple of things. One is because you guys had the same uh, passion for something in common. Right. And um, <clears throat> I believe, that, and because you guys respect all of this for real. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you want to make sure that it's a real deal. You treat everything with We right. want to document it and get the true facts, not like. You know, well, you'll yeah, need, I saw Bigfoot in right. 75. You need Sasquatch well, yeah. to sit down and do an interview with you. <laughs> I want that. I told Toby I'm going to be eating breakfast with him not before too long. Tell them back. that. They'll show up, sit out yeah. there, ask for ours. I'm not afraid of them. I mean, unless they draw first blood like Rambo, then it's all in bed. I'm not afraid of them. Yeah. I'm not afraid of them. I'm not fearful. If one approached you, yeah. let's say, because these are legitimate stories. I'm more stories afraid of, of people than I am of them. Where they approach people mm -hmm. and they want to start to connect. Mm -hmm. Would that be something you guys would do? Mm -hmm. I would oh, absolutely yeah. would. love to, yeah. I would. It would give me the proof I need. Yeah. And, and you know, you can read body language and so can they. And mm -hmm. if they take that posture, or that stance, then you know to back off and tell them to go away. How does this affect your faith? Like you both are religious people, you're both Christians. So how did, it, let's say they did want to connect and let's say they did have these supernatural powers. What are the implications there as far as scripture, as far as, you know? I think there's so much in the Bible about different types of people and they talk about, you know, angels or whatever. Maybe these things are some kind of, maybe they're sitting here to do good and man's so bad that they can't do good. I, uh, Who knows? I don't think it would affect my faith. I don't think it would um, shake it at all. My faith is strong. Um, not everything is in the Bible. Dinosaurs are not in the Bible. Doesn't mean they didn't exist. We have the evidence that they existed. Mm -hmm. Not everything that's existed is, is discussed in the Bible. But it doesn't affect my faith. Daryl, you've built such your potential right now <laughs> to go oh, man. full on documenting this for a year which well, my, I know sounds like a long yeah, time I know what the thing is I've already done it for 90 days and I'm just are you burnout you know, I'm not I I'm real um, it's real easy for me now because I just go to the hot spots on the in the morning on the recording and I go right past all the tree knocks because well what about like the, get, what about night sits what I about mean, like the tree structures that we miss like oh yeah are you oh, still yeah, interested in finding Oh all yeah, that all of that. Stuff. Yeah, I'm just waiting for the weather to break. I think Daryl will continue researching. I think he'll continue to record, save all the files, mm -hmm. and even if you don't listen to them, at least record them and save them. And you can always go back to them. And we got to get a thumb drive exchange. It's just going, mm -hmm. where yeah. you get five thumb drives mm -hmm. and you load them up and you yeah. send them out as a batch, mm -hmm. and then it's you just send so, out yeah, three or four consuming. of them. Yeah. I would love to take advantage of this opportunity in a lot a of ways. Job. I will help you too. I mean, I, I'll still want to help you with the stuff. Mm -hmm. It won't be the same. It won't. Did you tell Cindy how many hours? No. So we did the math. Mm -hmm. 16 hours a day of mm -hmm. recording on average yeah. times 90 days. Wow. 1,400 hours. Wow. I mean, That's that, good that, legit. That, that pass That's through wow. our recorder. That's amazing. 1,400 hours, Pat. Now, we were only able to grab 10% of that. Now, once the rain starts, that's going to all slow down. Maybe. Other than days oh. that it's not raining. Yeah. Or nights yeah. that it's not raining. But you'll still slow get down. to do it. Because when I first moved here about, what, a week in, we heard the screaming up there. Mm -hmm. And I go, wow, I'm going to record that. So I set everything up. And what did I get? Ding, 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 You know ding, why? Ding. <laughs> he set the parabolic up by the rain gutter. <laughs> gutter. <laughs> He got nothing. The next night, I got a little smarter. I put it over here in the middle where the rain gutters yeah. are. 
But then yeah. you hear, oh, you know, the same stuff we all hear all every time, every night. Yeah. And then you hear, mm -hmm. I would like to continue, go further. You guys have done so much research in such a short time. It really gives it um, not just validity, but it's, it's backed up. It's real deal. Mm -hmm. I think that if you live you here. You got to live it. I think if you live here, they consider you part of their community. So you're privy to all of that. Yeah. If you're That's coming here like. like they do with those shows and stuff, right? it's not going to work. But um, you guys heard stuff when the gentleman was here this past week with microphones, right? Okay. Yeah. More often than not, the long-term witnesses get the stranger stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's either because they feel comfortable sharing it with the mm -hmm. landowners or it's just because you guys are here more often and you see it. Mm -hmm. But, you know, in Vida, it was the lights, it was the mind mm -hmm. reading, it was the disappearing tracks, it was the animals being mutilated, Right. it was the the big lights. Um, so, but then you have to take into account the quartz vein, the spring, the river, mm -hmm. the Native yeah. American connection. Yeah, I love this property, mm -hmm. I love the house, I love everything about it, but for 450 it can be yours.